Demidov Innovations and Race Spot TV present round three action here of the official iRacing V8 Supercar Championship here at the lovely Spa Frankershorps course. I'm Brett O'Brien with me, Dan Benefield. Dan, welcome to the broadcast. Should be a great race tonight. Yeah, definitely one of them. Well, at least one of uh, my personal favourite tracks in the service. Not it really in this car though, but um, what a great track we're at <laughs> this week, branching out. Awesome. I mean, seven k is long, and um, obviously mo no more for uh, the Grand Prix stuff and the sports car stuff, but still an awesome racetrack. Yeah, definitely one of the jewels in the crown for the season, along with Bathurst. I would say these are the races that you want to win. As you said, seven grueling kilometres here, 20 corners, no doubt. We'll talk more about the track as time goes on, but you know, there's a series so far showing up that had the two races, the two different races with Ethan Grigg Gulp winning uh, race one and Ian Ford fighting back last week at Alton Park. There's been some uh, strong showing drew, during the week of uh, of both these drivers. Bo Cattell's also uh, had some good practice. That Corey Preston's a guy to look out for tonight. He uh, did extremely well in the V8 Supercars Americas series on the Saturday, so there should be some close racing throughout the field. Yeah, yeah. first time uh, we've seen um, uh, Corey Preston in the top split. I know he's run, been running the Monday night races, but he's actually been in the second split, so he's uh, made it into the top split this week, so it should be interesting to see what he can do uh, now that he's in the top split. <laughs> Yeah, and we've got the uh, four minutes of, or four and a half minutes of qualifying to go at the moment. Ian Ford's on provisional pole with a two minutes, 20.973. That's a pretty quick lap for this week. Uh, Ethan Grigold, his old sparring partner, on just uh, the three tenths behind at the moment. Still uh, a couple of laps to go, I would imagine. That's the uh, tough thing about having the 12 minute qualifying. These guys running their two minute 20, two minute 21 laps. They've got to get their laps right. They don't get many opportunities. Yeah, a bit different to uh, to the uh, other other tracks we visit, the short, shorter length uh, tracks where normally you can get a couple of runs out of two to three laps here. You only really, uh, well, if you're lucky, get two, one, one lap, or two, a uh, two lap run and a one lap run in. So really difficult. You really got to uh, nail, nail your lap. Um, out very early on, which is something uh, Marcelo Rivera hasn't done so far. Uh, slowest of the cars that have set a time with a 225.9, which is 1.4 seconds off Greg Sharp up ahead. Um, obviously, Bio Cubis, James King, Matthew Thompson, and Mario Vales Valeskic. Sorry if Vlasic. I mis mispronounced it. Yeah, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, need to get a move on because they still haven't got a, a time. To, uh, or representative, representative, can't speak English tonight. How you going tonight, um, Dan? All right, we'll have a break. <laughs> <laughs> Timing, yeah, with uh, with less than three minutes to go. Yeah, well, as we said, yeah, we're about to, just under the three minutes to go now. So for those cars crossing the line now, they'll still get the uh, opportunity to get two laps in. But like you said. Uh, you know, time runs out pretty quick here. Marcelo Rivera has, in fact, put his first you know, real time in a 2.22.2. So that's got him to ninth place on the grid. Expecting good things to come from Bo Cubis tonight. is his first race back in this series last week. Now driving for uh, SDC, and he's in the SDC colours tonight. So that's great for that team. Matty Thompson in Demidov Innovations, Commodore. It's his first race for this series. And Mario Vlasic, a privateer. Those are the three who haven't got a timing yet. Yeah, just trying to find Bo Cubis. Now, I'm not sure, is this a flying lap? I believe it is for, for Bo, uh, coming down through the comb now. So, he is on a flying lap now, it doesn't. And so, I, I say it doesn't look too quick, but I'm used to cars that are, like, loaded with downforce flying around the comb. So, it probably doesn't look quick to me, but it probably actually is relatively decent. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, Bo's going to need to uh, get this lap done. It's uh, one and a half minutes to go, so he was just, uh, he'll almost make the start-finish line, I would think. He'll be right on the edge. I think he might be a little bit short, of, uh, and he's gone off there. So that's going to be a no time here. Um, so that's going to be a struggle now. He's really going to have to put the hammer down. A minute 15 to go before he gets that start-finish line. He'll be right on the edge. 
So just that little mistake at turn 12 at Buhon there um, yeah, hasn't uh, hasn't got a time yet. So uh, it's, yeah, sort of a lot of work. But up at the front, things stay stagnant at the moment. Ian Ford on the provisional pole. Grid goal second. Ben Smith moved up to third with a 21-4. That's a good effort him. He's uh, in a demo of innovations colour this week. Bo Cattell into uh, fourth place. So Mick Crack now on the uh, SDC teammate of Ethan Grid goal in fifth place with 21.7. Bale Riches carrying the number one car again tonight at 22 flat, sixth position. Mick Healy had a good result on Friday as John Latham now moves up into sixth place in the sister TTL car of Vale Richards at 21.8. So we're uh, just at 20 seconds to go. Bo Cubis will get that opportunity to get another lap in. Yeah, I'm actually surprised at the moment Brenton um, with uh, Matty Hill. Uh, in uh, another TTL car, he's down in 13th at the moment, I'm only on a 22.7. I know, I know he drives a bit more of the of the GT stuff, but I'd expect him to be a bit quicker in the, in the V8s. Yeah, Matty, very talented, like you said, though, has done a bit of GT work lately. Hasn't done a lot of V8 driving, and that's probably the big difference here in that, you know, it, it's a car you've got to stay with consistently. Yeah, and if Matty does the next two, three, four weeks straight, you, you'll just see him moving up. He's got a strong team behind him in TTL. Got some good teammates. So, you know, tonight might be just a one-off. And mind you, he hasn't finished his qualifying lap. There's still a bit to go. Yeah, so the the uh, checker flag is out now. So uh, normal proceedings for the qualifying session. The drivers currently on a lap can finish their lap. Um, so he he's on a quick one. So we got Vale Riches uh, just about to cross the start the finish line. So Riches comes across the line now. He does improve and moves up ahead of um, John Latham uh, with a 21.8. So up to P6 for, for Riches. Uh, next is Ben Smith, but he's ben just Smith come into pit lane. So Maddie Hills next to come across the line. It looks like he went a little deep into the bus stop chicane there. He's got it off relatively well though as he comes across the line and improves by three tenths, which only gives him 12th position, jumping Marty Carroll in the process. Uh, Ian Ford, will he be able to improve? No, he won't on his 20.9. Marcelo Rivera next to the cross line, um, and obviously Brenton, you'll know more about this than me, but uh, a new sponsorship for, for ERA with that Ray of Life uh, sponsorship. Yeah, we'll talk more about that in the race. Yeah, but really excited to have a uh, way of life extend. And he has just gone off track there. So uh, not going to be an ex any uh, improvement on his time there. Good chance to practice your pit stop, pit stop entry here because uh, very uh, tricky entry. Mario Vlasic, who hasn't had a time set yet, just uh, coming around the final turn of the bus, stop onto the power, just to see if he's got a time locked in here. 224.74 is uh, the last of our runners. Bo Cubis, a 222.3, so got himself to 12th. I would imagine Bo wouldn't have been able to attack that lap as much as he'd want to. Uh, we're trying to see if we can get Corey Preston across the line. Any improvement? A 21.9, yes, there is. Gets him up to 8th. So good job for, for uh, Corey. Marty Carroll, no improvement. Oh, sorry, slight improvement on his 4.24. Five. I think that's almost uh, a two-tenths improvement. Greg Sharp has uh, no improvement there, and I'm just seeing uh, that might be about it. Yes, it is. It's a, just quickly, we'll go through the grid. So Ian Ford on pole from Ethan Greek, Gilt Baker, Tell, so Ben Smith, fourth, Mick Cracknell in fifth, uh, Val Rich is in sixth, John Latham, seventh, Corey Preston, eighth, Michael Healy, 9th, Mitchell McLeod in 10th, Marcelo Rivera, 11th, Bo Cubis, 12th, Marty Carroll in 13th, Matthew Hill in 14th, David Moore in 15th, James Keane, 16th, Matt Stratford in 17th, Greg Sharp, 18th, Mario Vlasic in 19th, and Matthew Thompson rounding out the field of 20 cars. Yeah, so it's a, a strong field, 20 cars again, and... Uh... It's great to have the consistent numbers week in, week out here in the official V8 Supercar Series. And, uh, yeah, the field just gets stronger. And TTL have got uh, three cars representing them, their team tonight, which is great to see. And, uh, you know, Vale Richards, Johnny Latham. I think Latham raced the last race as well. And uh, it's great to have, we said before, Matty Hill back into the series. 
Yeah, I mean, um, doing a bit of GT, GT work for TTL, uh, Matty Hill was doing uh, was doing that, of course, but um, good to have him back in the V8. Obviously not as quick as he probably would have liked, uh, but still. I mean, we've got the top, what, 16 cars covered by two seconds on a uh, 2 minute 20 plus lap, so it's, it's pretty good considering the lap, lap length. Yeah, it is. The start here is an unusual place. They're using the endurance layout for the pits. Um, but um, yeah, just watch for Bo Cattell. I've noticed he's been getting off the line fairly quick. Ian Ford seems to struggle off the line a bit. I know he got a good start last week at Alton. But um, Ethan Grigot, uh, he's showing some genuine pace again, but the revs are building. Yeah, revs are rising. Look out for Benny Smith as well. Remember, remember what happened last week at Alton Park as the, the lights are out and Cattell getting another good start is up alongside Grigor, he's up alongside Ford, they're three wide actually going into the source, that's not gonna, uh, our reef, sorry, that's not gonna work, Cattell to the lead off the start, he's ruffled in Ford and he's already pulled out a half a second lead. Yeah, I picked that, must have stuff sometimes, but yeah, Ford's now under, gonna be under attack from uh, Ethan Grigor, but a great start by Bo Cattell. Ian Ford here is gonna be full on defensive here, Bo Cattell, sorry, uh, Ethan Grigault deep under brakes here, just to be able to hold their line through Lecombe. So, uh, yeah, Ethan Grigault, as I said, has got some good pace. And Smith in fourth, Mick Cracknell fifth, Johnny Latham's had a good start up into sixth place. Vale Richards has swapped spots. And we've got a car at the back with a slow down. I'm thinking, who is that? I'm thinking that might be Marcelo Rivera. It is, so that's a, an expensive place to do a slow down, unfortunately. So, uh, Marcelo from 11th on the grid has dropped down to probably about uh, 16th, I think, but no other incidents that I can see. Other than that little slowdown from uh, from Rivera, a, rel a relatively clean start, maybe just a little bit of contact between uh, Ford and Cattell as they went into El Rouge uh, for the first time, but uh, relatively clean, no damage, unlike last week at Alton Park where we had cars rolling down the front straight. Uh, it, tell you what, Ford's um, uh, pulled back a little bit of the gap that uh, Cattell got off, off uh, the start already and he's bring Greg Gould with him as well as, as Ben Smith. In fact, there's a quite actually a good line of probably 10 cars behind the leader. Yeah, it's going to be a good race here. This is going to really tighten things up with Cattell getting in the lead. Um, I know Ford and, and uh, Ethan Greg Gold have had good speed all week. I know from what I understand that Cattell's had some race practice or oh, the bus oh. stop under attack there from Ford and he's not going to want to muck around he's going to want to get this job done and Cattell got a really good run out of the bus stop there and I would imagine it's going to be an attack here in the source. Yeah definitely is very close going into the bus stop she came but now forward to the inside at the end of lap one into the source. Oh! Very close between Greg Gould and Cattell there. Ben Smith getting a little loose coming out of the source as well. Now all three, the first three cars, n n bumper to bumper as they come down into a uh, Rouge for the second time. Uh, we'll see, Cattell should have the advantage here. In fact, Greg Gould's going to get a double toe as well. So, uh, and th this is why Camel Straight is so annoying. In fact, forward straight to the inside and then across the track trying to break the draft. Greg Gould having a look. Here comes Cattell now into Lacombe. Well, Ford's got this opportunity here. He's, he did have the uh, fastest qualifying lap, and he was actually, uh, what was he? Eight tenths, sorry, uh, four tenths up on Cattell in qualifying. So, you know, Ford's got an opportunity here to uh, create a little bit of a gap between himself and his main rival in the championship, Ethan Grigor, at the moment. But don't take anything away from Bo Cattell. He's been a previous race winner in the, uh, this, uh, in the official series, I think, at uh, Summit Point last season, or season before. Had a great job there and uh, won that race, but Ian Ford's been working really hard on this setup this week, and he's just stretching that elastic ever so slightly. But no matter what you uh, gain here, you can lose it all on the Blanche down Blanchemont with the uh, draft. So just needs to stretch that little lead out. Yeah, Cattell getting really taily on the exit of uh, Top five cars, though, all nose to tail here, really close at the end of the first lap. It was two seconds between. Bo Cattell, who was, who was the leader at the line, and Mick Cracknell in fifth. He's, uh, in fact, top three pulling away a little bit uh, from Ben Smith and Mick Cracknell. Oh, is Cattell sideways again coming out of Stavlo. Uh, 
very least. Mm. Not sure what's happened to your mic there, mate, but it just seems like it's crackled and died there for a sec. But even behind them, there's a great battle here I'll between Michael Healy and Fail Riches. And Riches has just been able to take him at Blogs Rock, so great effort there. And that's Paul oh. Mitchell. With... Yep, Sorry to jump in, Brenton, but Cattell had it all locked up trying to look at Ford, trying to keep Ethan Great Gook behind him. Yeah. He almost took out Ian Ford. I'm hoping uh, we'll be able to get a replay of that because that was really close. And Ethan Gritgo, uh up into second now. Brio Cattell back down to third with Ben Smith and Mick Cracknell right behind him. Yeah, well, the, the traffic jam, as one of our spectators said, there is a traffic jam. And this is a great battle here with uh, Vale Richards. He's just got clear of uh, Mitchell McLeod here and Michael Healy. Corey Preston's all over the back of Michael Healy. We've got Bo Cubis in 10th uh, place, so a good start from him, Marty Carroll, Matthew Hill, and James Keane in the way of life cards just there. I saw, um, I think it was Marcelo Rivera's having to pit, and also John Latham's pitting as well. Didn't see what happened there. Um, can't see any damage on their car at the moment. Whether they got a, uh, a, a stop-go penalty or something from a uh, shortcut, but oh, Marcelo... There's Corey Preston's around. Corey Preston's around coming out of uh, through the comb. I think he just got loose while alongside Michael Healy. They might have been very light contact, and if it was, it would have been a net code. Very unfortunate for Corey, uh, uh, and that's that's going to drop him pretty much to 18th. We'll see if he pits, um, but if the damage isn't too bad, it wouldn't surprise. Yeah, well, if they're pitting now, they're not going to make it to the end. I think the pit window opens for about lap seven. More than likely, lap eight will uh, will get you home. Lap seven will be a stretch. So at the moment, um, the, the cars are going to have to take, stay out there a little bit longer and uh, stay in the traffic jam. And um, Yeah, the, the, it was a fuel-restricted start today. The 80.6 litres goes in. They're going to need probably 34, 35 litres upon their pit entry but like I said at the endurance pit they're using here and it's such a lengthy pit stop so you certainly don't want any uh, mid-race penalties and you certainly don't want to have to go in the pits more than once. Yeah it's about uh, in, in transit alone it's about 45 50 seconds probably about a minute um, in total once you include in in and out um, just looking at uh, Mitchell McLeod on the back of Vale Rishes right now, but um, obviously been such a long pit lane. I mean, it's due to the track length, you're not going to go all that down, but you're going to drop back big time. Yeah, you will. Just uh, even the pack behind has got um, we've got uh, Greg Sh Matthew Thompson, Greg Sharp, and James Keane's pitting as well in the other way of life. Uh, car there so I'm not sure what they're thinking there because they won't make it to the end Corey Preston's pitting so I'm just thinking maybe the two came together though Corey looks like he's got some more damage to the back there we saw an incident before with him Marcelo Rivera has just come out in front of the chasing pack with uh, the possibility of lapping him shortly but back up the front Ford Ethan Grigol just cleared that little bit out from Bo Cattell who's got a charging Ben Smith behind him with Mick Cracknell. Just looks like he's struggling to hang on to that tail at the moment, but the uh, top five have certainly cleared away from Vale Riches and Mitch McLeod. Michael Healy doing a great job there in the, the uh, soccer golf car in uh, position eight. Martin Carroll's moved up. Just trying to think, Bo Cubis must have made a mistake, I'm thinking, or... Yeah, because Carroll's moved up tonight. I think we've also just got... Matthew Hill's gone wide there a little bit. Yeah, Bo Cubis must have made a mistake previously. I didn't see it, but he certainly dropped down a couple of spots. Yeah, it's actually uh, because he was ahead of Matty Hill uh, at the start of this lap, so I wonder if he's just got to slow down across the top of Redillion or something uh, and dropped in a couple of seconds back off the back of that uh, TTL car. Up yeah, he was head. also in front of he was also in front of Marty Carroll as well. So Marty's um, the uh, team leader of SCC. He's got the job done there. So uh, interesting to see what Bo Cubis' time is here. It might be something as simple as a uh, a slowdown through a rouge, but we'll find out more of his uh, lap time. Yeah, yeah, might have actually been earlier than that because his previous lap was a two twenty four point zero, which was 
uh, nine tenths of Carroll and then four tenths of Matty Hill and he's dropped back even more this lap so I'm thinking it might even be something uh, bust up chicane maybe Well, back up the front, Ethan Grigg Gold certainly putting some pressure on our race leader now, just down to three tenths of a second between uh, Ford and Grigg Gold. Cattell's doing a great job hanging there in third spot. Oh, Ford's just wide. That Ford's, Ford's wide. wide. And getting the job Ford's done, so Grigg Gold through. Well, I'll tell you, uh, it, j literally just as we come back to this battle for the lead, uh, Ian Ford's made a mistake and uh, Ethan Grigg Gold back to the front. Well, I've got a feeling this is the first time that Grig has been in front this week in, uh, in races, so interesting to see how much he can uh, hold on to Ford here. They'll be uh, racing great entry exit from us. From, uh, oh, hang on two seconds, sorry. Yeah, it was a good exit from Ford. Uh, he got a good run through our Rouge and across Rouge. Oh, and the side by side going into the comb now. Ford's got the inside for the left, but now Ethan Grig Gold will have the inside for the right hand side and should be able to hold on. Will Ford be able to do the cut back into Rivage? Cattell's there. Cattell's going around the outside of Ford now through Revage, but won't be able to make it stick. Uh, oh, he's very close. Cattell is to to the back, and Smith in the background, uh, sideways coming out of Revage, 399 corner now. So Greek Gold's pulled out probably about th four car lengths on on Ford, who now has Cattell all over the back of him, and Ben Benny Smith has a front row seat. Yeah, lap five now as well, so um, the action's just heating up, isn't it? And we've still got uh, 17 and a half laps to go. And like you said, uh, this top five is just getting closer and closer. Mick Crack now at the back there hasn't had to do a lot of work, but like you said, he's got the best seat in the house and you know, just wondering if he's getting a chance to save his tyres or save a bit of fuel there. And uh, he's shown some exceptionally good pace all through the week as well. So he's not playing his cards too close to his chest here, old Mick. I can see him... Uh, coming through later on and making an attack at the right time. Uh, just sitting there holding on for now, I uh, just saw in the YouTube comments as well um, that Corey Preston, when he had that spin at Lacombe, he's damaged his left rear suspension and has about 10 minutes worth of repair, so he'll go about 4 or 5 laps down now, which is unfortunate for him, uh, obviously first race. Um, First race in the top split uh, has not gone his way at all. Yeah, first race in the top split won the, um, the uh, second split race last week at Alton Park, and like I said, he has shown some good pace this week, and, and and showing more improvement. He went through a bit of a flat patch not so long ago, but just seems to be fighting his way out of it at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's uh, end of the race for him, really, isn't it? In regards to being competitive. Yeah, it really is unfortunate. It looked like he had a good pace. I mean, qualified was sort of in that uh, that traffic jam with Vale Riches, Michael Healy, Marty Carroll, Matty Hill um, early on. So it would have been interesting to see where he would have ended up um, after all that, because it looked like he was going to make that move stick on on Healy had he not. I think it might have been a light net co contact, but either way, had had he not spun and hit the wall. Um, yeah, I mean, he would probably would have been in the battle for 6 and 7 between McLeod and Richards, which uh, has swapped around. McLeod has got past that number one, uh, that number one TTL car. Yeah, it's, sorry, just um, for all those viewers, I'm actually uh, commentating under camera light tonight. It looks like some of the power's back on, luckily enough, but um, I'm still commentating under, co under the camera. I haven't had a chance to turn the lights on, but yeah, um... Like you said, there's uh, differences um, throughout the field at the moment. Just looking at the lap times of the leaders, 22-7 uh, for our leader, Greg Galt, um, which is matching the same pace of our uh, fellow in number nine, Marty Carey, who's just making a move on Healy as we talk here. So a good move by SDC car, Marty Carroll and Mick Healy fighting away here. And Healy's just had, he's probably given that away a little bit um, good race craft there by Healy, but a good move by Carroll. So Carroll and Healy swap positions into 8th and ninth. Bo Cubis is just lurking there in the background with Matty Hill as well, recovering Matty Hill with a 23-1 and 22-5 for Bo Cubis, if you don't mind. So, you know, the longer these race goes, the longer the race goes, these guys are just getting faster and faster. Good battle here with Greg Sharp and Mario Blasich, right here, Matty Stratford in the Four Motorsports Talk car, and Dave Moore, who's... Uh, 
obviously had some issues uh, with the 28-1 last lap. But a good little tight battle here between the three of them. Yeah, just uh, looking, um, obviously, looks like actually Mario has got a run on Greg Sharp here as he has a look into bus stop chicane, but won't be able to make that once. In fact, Sharp's gone a little too deep. Uh, looks like Murray is going to get a better run as Stratford gets a bit sideways. A little bit of damage to the right rear of uh, Greg Sharp's car. Not sure what that was from exactly. Uh, that's still, in fact, uh, David Moore's actually, in fact, Murray's on the outside of Greg Sharp going through the source, which is pretty interesting. Um, but David Moore looks like he's going to make it a four car battle pretty shortly. Yeah, if I see damage to the back of uh, the car in front of Mario, I always look for damage in front of Mario's car because uh, he, he uh, has been known to uh, make attempts at bump drafting cars into corners, shall we say. I'm trying to be politically correct there, but by saying that, he's doing a good job tonight up into uh, 14th place carrying the car number 20 plate, so he should be happy. He's, uh, Greg Sharp, just a little bit of damage, it seems to have a little bit of an aerodynamic disadvantage, but still able to hold that position there. And Matt Stratford, who did a great job at Old Park last week, just made that little mistake uh, in this first chicane last week, which led a whole pack through. But um, again, in the top split, so he should be happy with that too. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a little bit of a train now in behind um, in behind Greg Sharp. It looks like uh, Maud's actually the quickest of all these three. Um, so. Wouldn't surprise me if he gets by them eventually. Just looking, so we've had John Latham, James Keenan, and Marcelo Rivera pit as well at some point. Um, going back up to the front, though, it looks like our top five has uh, strung out just a little bit. Still covered by uh, by just three seconds, though, at the end of last lap. Obviously, we'll get an update uh, when they come across the line this time by, but uh, not as much as there was, was a couple of laps ago. As a uh, great goal, uh, as the leaders come across to complete lap seven now, and great goal just pulling away by another two tenths over Ian Ford. So he's gap between first and second now, out to just shy of eight tenths. Uh, Bocatel, uh 2.1 off the lead, Cracknell 3.3, and then Ben Smith in fifth, four seconds. So it's four seconds between the top. Um, the top five now is we've got uh, we've got Michael Healy. Healy and Marty Carroll in. So these guys were were battling uh, early on for eighth and ninth. So now it looks like that their battle is going to come to the pit lane as uh, they make their way down this very very long pit lane uh, yeah, with the lost, endurance we've, layout. We've lost James Keane as well. He's had a disconnect. Don't know what that for. Greg Sharp's obviously had an issue too. Sorry to step away for a sec. Um, we've got power back on here now. So a 2 minute 34.5 last lap for Greg Sharp. That's uh, gone in, put him out of any contention. He's lost so much time as the car he was battling with previously is already well up the main straight at Camels. Matty Thompson, we haven't mentioned him as uh, much either. He's probably driving a bit of a solo race at the moment in 12th place, but doing a very good job. But um, up at the front, just uh, trying to find my way there. Yeah, Ian Ford and uh, Ethan Grigolt still doing a great job. Yeah, just watching Carol and Healy in the pit lane. Obviously, these two were battling before, and it looks like they're going to go out as they came in. Carol ahead of Healy. Now, where are the leaders? The leaders are, yeah, they're nowhere near those guys, so they'll be sweet to rejoin without any traffic around. Uh, and, and I've noticed that Cracknell has passed, has passed Ben Smith as well. I'm, I'm not sure whether you called that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Cracknell. I just caught him as a bit of a sleeper in the field there. He's just been sitting back, and now that it's uh, getting more to the business end, he's got the job done. A 22.8 last lap for him is very competitive. But Ethan Grigold, a 22 flat, if you don't mind. So, he, uh, just thinking that Ian Ford might be contemplating a pit stop here. Well, I mean, we saw at Zolder in the first round of the championship, uh, Sean Kelly ran that really early pit stop. Um, which got him a couple of positions, which he managed to hold on to both the positions and the tyres, that is, um, in, um, in the long run. Uh, so it, it 
could be possible to do the undercut once again here, but I don't think it'd work as well, obviously, so many fast sections on the, on, on the track. Yeah, it's good to have, um, good to have fresh tyres, but a lighter car, I feel, uh, will be, uh, the better option. Yeah, Marcelo Rivera coming into the pits again, so I'm thinking the, uh, first stop, there's obviously some issue there. Uh, who else we got in the pits? I think at the moment it's a pretty clear pit stall, so, um, yeah, no, the racing is certainly just seems to be stretching out a bit. Such a long pit entry and long pit, yeah, it's so long in the pits, isn't it? So, just this goes through this phase at the moment. But Ethan Griggoltz just seems to be stretching out from Ian Ford at the moment. Over the strike last time, it was just about a second, so I'd say it's about a second already, and you don't want to be losing that draft of the car before you. Yeah, another 22-0 as well for Greg last up, so he's been consistent as he gets a little loose coming out of no-name corner. Uh, these two, though, pulling, checking out a bit from uh, Bocatel, Mick Cracknell, and Ben Smith in behind with uh, Mitch McLeod and Val Richards still having that battle for six, about uh, four and a half seconds behind Ben Smith. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, Ford's got it. I reckon Ford, he has to try his crit guilt a little loose again, <laughs> coming out of uh, coming out of um, proud nose that time. Um, but I, I feel that Ford has to try and do something with the strategy to to try and leap for Greg Gull, um to to win the race. Yeah, well, we can do that with the undercut. It's, it's been relatively successful from what I've seen, but. Um... Yeah, I, if I was calling in right now, I'd be saying it's time to pit because uh, he is definitely just seems to be losing touch. Yeah, clattering so just the inside coming up through curve. The bus stop. Yeah, he Ford did clatter the inside curb uh, rather hard coming through Blanchemore that time around as Ford's in. Who else? I think that oh, Cracknell's in as well, and, and actually Rich is is in as well, just in behind. So we got three of our top seven in the pit lane this time around so it'll be interesting to see uh if the undercut's going to work and it's such a long long pit entry and just down uh, at the source at the pit stop here in pit lane it's so tight you actually got to even though you got the pit limiter on you've actually got to um, lift going around such a tight turn and i know uh in an earlier race both uh, ford and crack now by coincidence so guys in the pit lane now both hit those walls hard and it pretty much ruined their race on Saturday. Yeah, it's a good thing about normally running the Grand Prix car here is that we run the Grand Prix layout, so we don't, uh, we can, we do need to slow down for that that sort of right hander as we come out, but we can go a bit wider and pretty much nail it. <laughs> um, make makes life a bit easier as now Ford has finally come to a stop as says Cracknell and Rich is not too far away. Um, so now I'm just trying to figure out where these guys might come out in terms of traffic. Well, I think they'll be in clear, clear, clear track. Ford being released now. You'd like, yeah, I would say he would be in clear track. Crack now out and uh, Riches wouldn't be too far behind now. Yeah, Riches on his way as well. It seemed like a pretty quick stop there by Ian Ford. I think he's actually made a gain on Mick Crack now. I'm sure he has. So this will be interesting if he's made a gain on Crack now whether. Mick was uh, a bit uh, hesitant in that La Source in the pit entry, but he certainly seems to have dropped off just probably that half a second or so. I don't have the pit times available to him. Actually, pretty interesting because Bo Cubis also came in and he's come out right in the middle of that battle he was in the earlier with uh, Marty Carroll and just got Michael Healy. Quickly, Ma Michael Healy. I forgot. <laughs> You could, you'd think you wouldn't be able to forget uh, Michael Healy with that bright green soccer goal car, uh, but I managed to somehow. He's actually uh, curious this is, has come out just behind that battle. Um, looks like it, he's a, actually a bit closer than what he was before the pit stop, so um, it'll be interesting to see if he can get past that TTR and uh, that fellow SDC car, so interesting to see where these guys will end up. Yeah, Bo Cattell also pitting now. So interested that um, Greg Galt. Ethan Griggolt hasn't pitted. Mitch McLeod yes. in, Ben Smith yes, in Cattell. Oh, and Ethan has pitted, sorry. So, yeah, yeah so this, this, top is, four. this is in... You go. Sorry, sorry, Brent. Uh, top four in the pit lane now. 
Uh, just trying to see if Matty Ethan Hill... Ethan has oh. hit that pit wall. He has hit that pit wall. That's exactly the wall I said. At La Source, it is so tight, and that front left has hit that front wall. Yeah, it looks like everyone's yeah, there is damage. In, but there is, yes. there is damage. It's not so much the cosmetic damage he needs to worry about. It's more, is there any suspension damage or steering damage? That's that's what uh, what's really going to affect him uh, in the long run. Obviously, we'll see where he's going to come out. He hasn't got the car on a good angle either. Uh, did Bic I thought Bocatel might have overshot his pit stall then as well, but um, not a good as good an angle has Ethan Greek got, uh, got a, his car on compared to Ian Ford as he's released now. Ooh. And Cattell, Cattell's gained time. We 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 realise this at uh, at um, Zolder that Cattell doesn't need to take as much shield on because three. he's a right foot breaker. But Ford both cars good. both cars have yeah. come out in front of Ian Ford now. But obviously he'll have the momentum coming into Lecom. Yeah, but like you said, though, with Cattell, he, he does that uh, different braking method and didn't have to put on as much fuel. And so really heavy, heavy advantage now to Ethan Greg oh. Although Cattell's making a decent little run here. Cattell, that's not where you can pass Barry Cattell. And now now he's all... Yeah, he knows that was a mistake now because he, he uh, was defending more from Ian Ford than that he was attacking Ethan Greg Galt. Um, hell... <laughs> Trust me, I tried that. I've tried that in multi class. I've seen people try that in multi class, and it hasn't worked. Never mind in the same class. They could tell say so that move was never going to happen. Now, Ethan Greek got playing smart. They saw him coming, gave him a bit of room, so there wasn't any contact. Um, but they all somehow they all stayed exactly where they were in terms of positions um, after that holiday. It's forward now to the inside of Patel, but doesn't make it stick into Fresnes. Yeah, well, Cattell's being very aggressive here on the outlap, and so he should be, though, because he's very good with the cold tyres. We saw what he was able to do in the first lap of the race, so, you know, I, I take my hats off to him. You know, whilst the chance is there to attack, make the most of it, because yeah, if you can't get to Ethan Grigg in the first lap or two from this pit exit whilst you got that chance, we saw what Ethan was able to do once his tyres are up to temperature, so if you don't have a go at him now, you might not get another chance. He's got it. He's got to get a good run through Blanchimore if he wants to have a look into uh, the bus stop chicane. But he's not close enough. In fact, Ford Ford might have a look and does have a look. Cattell moves the car across. He's doing. Oh, that's exactly what happened before. But he managed to get the car pulled up a lot better. The car was sideways, like locked up and everything for Bo Cattell. Then how did he not hit Ethan Greek? Oh, I will never know. And hold on to his position. Never mind. Pull the car up as he does it again yeah. into the source so he, that's going to kill the rear tyres so he's got to be he can't do that too much or else he'll have no rear tyres left on the race what it's also doing is killing his exit speed and uh, both times now through uh, the source and through the bus stop the grief gold has just been able to drive away here and that's going to frustrate the hell out of even Ford and can tell oh. again sideways that, that, that was insane uh, that was very... Uh, I don't even know how you can get that told he's coming over for Adelion. But I thought Ian Ford um, might have got a... He was very close to getting a slowdown then as well. He had a heap of understeer coming through the middle of our rouge. Um, so he had to really lift out to make sure he didn't get a slowdown, which cost him time. Which, in essence, he got most back after after Cattell had, a, had that massive moment. Yeah, as I said, though, definitely advantage Ethan Griggold here. We saw... The distance he was about to put on Bo Cattell and the pack uh, from the first in, the shortest in, this time he's got Ian Ford stuck behind him. So, uh, you know, no, no offence to Cattell, very, very quick. But I'm sure he's as quick as uh, Ian Ford and Ethan Grigg Galt tonight, but he's second place at. So, uh, at the front we've got Dave Moore, oh. who's continuing going on. Oh. Cattell got as a now falls to the inside of Cattell and will make that move stick into Fresnes. But I wonder if uh, Cattell's actually made a pressure adjustment or something um, in the pit stop that hasn't worked because that car's been really loose ever since he's come out of the pit stop. Massive sideways moment coming out of Pouillon, uh, which essentially has lost in second position. Yeah, he does seem to be struggling on the exit, but um, I'm not sure he made any adjustments to his uh, tyres. We'll no doubt find that out, hopefully, at the end of the race. We'll make sure we ask that question, but 
what that's done is Greg Gore has been released entirely now. And David Moore, our race leader at the moment, I think he's running as a privateer now, former multi-21 driver, is uh, entering the pit lane. So had his uh, had a moment in the sun, led a few laps, so having his pit stop now at lap 13. I know what it feels like after the iRacing Grand Prix series at Silverstone this week. I've ran a longer strategy and led a few laps. It was it felt good, even though I knew I was going to lose the lead anyway. It felt good. But uh, looking ever since Cattell's uh, had that moment and let 40 past, he's uh, he's stuck with him. As uh, they come through uh, Rouge now and up to. Uh, over Redillion, I should say. Uh, still got Mick Cracknell, which is in fourth, and Benny Smith, uh, Benny Smith, right behind him, in about a second behind him, actually, in fifth. Uh, then you got Val Riches in sixth, Cloud seventh, Carol eighth, with Cubis, his teammate, right behind him, in ninth, and then you got uh, Michael, Michael Healy in tenth. Uh, actually, uh, Matty Hill's actually not too far off that group either, so uh, that be could become a four-car battle pretty soon. Yeah, good recovery by Matty Hill, and uh, as the race goes on again, showing some good pace. We just see what kind of pressure Bo Cubis, brand new to the uh, SDC team, um, can put on the uh, team race manager, Mark Carroll. I'm sure since he's uh, he's a, he's new to the team, he wouldn't want to do it too put too much pressure on him. But obviously, if he's faster, he will, uh, I'm sure these guys will be able to talk each to each other in the, in their own uh, in their respective team speak. And it would just be, yeah. hey, have, uh, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I have to remember, Bo Cube was a previous series champion here, so he's certainly no slouch. So um, and again, he was away for about a season and a half. Great to have him back on board. So uh, he's going to get faster and faster. I think we mentioned that before. But Marty Carroll's also uh, done a really good job up here into ninth position. So I think he started from 13th. So good work for Marty getting through four cars. Uh, I think Marcelo Rivera is one of those cars. He's left us, unfortunately. But um, yeah, under attack now from Bo Cubis. Yeah, uh, actually, sorry. Um, they have pulled away a bit from uh, from Michael Healy over the last lap or two. Um, it's fairly more falling into the clutches now of um, Matty Hill rather than uh, attacking the two S SDC cars up the road as Cubis closes in on Carroll. Under brakes for the uh, bus stop chicane now, but it looks like oh, actually they're pretty equal on exit. He is definitely qu uh, close enough to have a look into the source. Yes, he will. So Cube is to the inside of Carroll now to the source. Will he be able to make it stick? It's going to need to be able to get a decent run off the corner. And it looks like they're still side by side, but it looks like Cubis will be able to make it stick unless all oh, actually. This is going to be interesting. You don't want to go through a route side by don't side, the especially when your teammates. Oh, I'm oh. not sure. I'm thinking Marty might have a slowdown there. But... All straight. Yeah. So as they come into Lake Holm, Marty's in a great position to attack here if he wants to. Yeah, backed out of that. No doubt Marty Carroll's backed out of that and, and let Bo do his thing. But that's some close racing there. Mick Healy had a great view of that behind. So, uh, yeah, Marty Carroll and Bo Cuba swap positions. Bo just a bit wide there on exit. Now Carroll to the inside into Ravage. But I think oh. Car uh, Cubis, I should say, will be able to hang on. This has brought Healy, and it's bringing Matty Hill back into the... Yeah, so a great battle here by the STC guys and Mick Healy. Be good to see... Uh, Matty Hill right up amongst this three-car battle will probably turn into a four-car battle. I think now that Bo's just got that car at one and a half car lengths, he might be in the clear once the car's settled down a bit. But uh, Marty's not certainly hasn't backed off him at all. I'm not sure there's any team orders here with the STC team. Well, I, I think the, the team boss has said <laughs> you part, that was an aggressive. I mean, I mean. Cubis did have... Oh, Cubis has actually gone wide through uh, Stavlo. But I think he'll be able to hold on. To, I think Mitch McLeod might have just run a bit wide 
up ahead as well. In fact, no. I think it might have been Val Richards who we lost for a second, but going back to this battle, um, yeah, that move at, at El Rouge, you don't want to go be going through there sideways. So with like another competitor, um, um, another competitor there from like a rival team team is Cuba. Oh, really this is going wide here. And is he going to chop in front? If, oh, if it's going to be a hell of a this, save here. If he holds on to this position, which I don't think it will, I'm pretty sure Carol's going to have the advantage until the source rolls reversal of last slap. Uh, and for, uh, oh, the side by side. Be here, here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> They're gonna as Matty Hills now on the all over the back of um of Michael Healy. But here we go again. They're gonna go side by side into our ridge once again. I think Carol. Uh, no, there's no overlap this time around. So yeah, no hard in mouth moments for anyone at SDC. Um, as now well, Healy's, Healy's all over great the back. Run. He's got a really good run through our ridge. Um, and over Redillion as now he looks to the inside of Marty Carroll and he looks like he's going to make it stick relatively easily uh, and and he does a very good move by Michael Healy there yeah I think that all started at the bus stop with Cubis' mistake I'm pretty sure Marty could have probably pushed harder there but he didn't want to uh, to uh, take any time out of Bo Cubis so that was set up there from the bus stop and then through uh, La Source but Michael Healy now has made that uh, gain and uh, has put himself up a position. So 8th uh, place, ninth place now for Healy. And uh, he'll have that car wound up. Showed some great pace on the Friday race, I think it was, on the America Series, coming second in that. So, yeah, Bose just hasn't had the car settled since he's uh, taken the lead of this gap, but he just seems to have stretched out now. Cubis has pulled away out. <clears throat> Here, here, they did not get a yep. good run through on there. He's left himself, and now Carol's to the inside through the first part of Frodenay's. Uh, and now he's going to be on the inside into Stavlo. It looks like uh, Matty Hill might follow him through. So Carol's got the move stick, and actually, Matty Hill's going to follow him through. So now Healy pulled off a great move at the start of the lap, but now he's lost two. As a uh, We'll just bring Corey Preston. We've got Corey Preston here with us now. Um, obviously, uh, Corey's first run in the top split this season. Uh, not the way you wanted it to go, though, Corey. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm thinking it was a netco because it didn't look like you made any contact with Michael Healy. No. Oh. Oh, what up at the, up at the Cooms. Uh Yeah, I just I got up, tried to go up the inside of him. And then, uh, obviously, because it's a chicane, it goes around to the other way and um, yeah I, I thought I left him enough room but obviously the sim didn't think so and uh, decided to get me uh, right out sideways as Mark Scaff would say and um, it, as soon as it got up on the curb it, it straightened up and, and snapped back the other way before I could do anything about it so yep big hit into the wall and uh, totally tore the left rear corner out of the car. Yeah, really unfortunate. We're just watching Matty Hill get really sideways through our rouge and over real deal on there. And pretty sure he was pretty lucky not to get a slowdown there. But now he's got Michael Healy all over the back of him. Uh, just quickly, Corey, obvi obviously uh, first run in the top split. Uh, very different uh, from any different from the second split. Other than the increase in pace, obviously. Oh, uh, the guys that were behind me in second split for the last couple of weeks, you know, they were putting pretty big pressure on me. But, you know, I've, I've let my guard down with in regards to I-rating a bit because, you know, last two weeks I should have been in top split with my pace. But, yeah, my I-rating let me down, so I just I was always car four or car two. So, But we rectified that this week, and, uh, yeah, this happens. But uh, oh, I'm looking forward to next week. Any yes, chance uh, of uh, moving your car there, Corey, uh, if you could get it out of there, mate, if you, uh, you just seem to have it parked across pit lane like you do sometimes, mate, and every once in a while when we're trying to find a car, it just seems to come in, so if you could do that, that'd be great. Oh, no, has my car rolled out on it? Oh, no. Mm. But anyway, thanks for that, Corey, mate. Um, no doubt uh, a bit of bad luck tonight, mate, but hopefully uh, over the next few weeks, mate, we continue to see... Uh, see you in the top split and yeah good luck oh sorry <laughs> sorry the jumping bridge but i think <laughs> i think matty hill uh, just got the save of the season yes it cost him a position 
but <laughs> that was huge. Not sure who needs to change your underwear first there, Dan, yourself or Matty Hill, but it was a great save by him. That, that could have ended very badly for him and by the sounds of it, you too there, man. So uh, there's some great, awesome recovery there by Matt Hill, but that's dropped him off behind Mick Keeley and Martin Carroll now, but we know he's got the pace to uh, get going and get up there again, but we're at the uh, start of lap 17 now, so five laps to go, and uh, yeah, no doubt he'll get up there again. Yeah, it was very actually very good driving from um, uh, from Michael Healy as well to not not run into him because obviously we're right led left and right is very good very um, observant of uh, Healy then uh, to not um, run into the back of that TTL car and take tenth position away. Have to have a look at the battle for fourth and fifth here as well with Mick Cracknell and Ben Smith. These guys have been in this position since their uh, pit stops on uh, lap 10 for Ben Smith. And uh, yeah, no, they both came in on lap 10. So holding station at the moment, last lap 22.3 for Cracknell and 22.9 for Smith. So just dropped off there, but certainly made that ground up again. So that's a battle to watch out for. And also I've noticed back up at the front, uh, Ian Ford's taken three tenths of a second out of uh, Ethan Grigg on that last lap. Still the uh, 1.7 seconds behind, so you'd like to think that Ethan would be fairly comfortable up there in that number one position, but you know, Ford's still there putting some pressure on, and it could be down to tyres here. This is the longer of the stints. Yeah, with a, um, we've got just over five laps to go. I mean, three tenths of a second in a lap isn't enough to um to even catch Grickle I mean I guess it would be different with the draft but you'd have to say if it's only a two or three tenths a lap that a great call yeah of course but you've got to get yourself into that draft and there's enough uh, enough straight lines here that you can once you get in the draft Greg Sharp's got some severe damage too didn't see what happened to him but he's uh, limping around badly uh some severe damage to the right front and uh, no he's actually lost it through Eau Rouge yeah who was that sorry Brenton was Greg just... Sharp yeah Greg yeah. Sharp car 17 just lost it through Eau Rouge here on the exit at uh, Redillion so uh, yeah that's going to uh, be major damage to him so I'm not sure there's anyone on Latham would have been behind him so he probably will drop that one spot. Yeah, Lathan's just gone past him now, but I think uh, Greg Shatt's going to have to bring that car in because it's relatively heavily damaged. Uh, just looking for a battle on track. Um, Mitch McLeod still holding just up ahead of uh, our riches, but we're looking at a ready in now of, of uh, Greg Sharp coming through uh, El Rouge and Redillion where he had his accident and um, it looks like that the car's just oh, too much inside curb and it's just upset the car and it's just throwing him straight into the wall so unfortunate there for Greg Sharp um, I don't think they'll be able to repair that car in time to get him back out to finish the race which is really unfortunate for him, um, yeah, I'd obviously say just stay done, and he's not going to be dropping back any more places. So 17th place will be for uh, for Sharpie tonight. But you know he's in a top split, and um, he hasn't had much track time this week. But um, yeah, it's uh, Lester Mert, no doubt, onwards to Phillip Island. I think it is next week. Yeah, I mean the V8 actual V8 track or that they visit in real life, and obviously a track in Australia. And a very, very fast track at that. Um, is a, just watching Mitch McLeod go really right coming out of Stableau there. A bit loose. Not as loose as Matty Hill, but still a bit loose. Um, but going back to this battle for fourth. Still relatively uh, equal between Cracknell and Fat Smith. Gained quite a lot of time on Cracknell going into the bus stop chicane there, but I think he went in a little too deep. And lost a bit on the way out. See the lap times as they come across the line. Cracknell a 22.7, Smith a 22.6, so another tenth out. Eight tenths is the difference as uh, Ben Smith got really good rotation. Not sure if he meant to get that much rotation or not on turning, 
full of sores, but I'm um, getting a really good rotation there. Um, uh, it's got it's. Yeah. Well, the, these guys are. Yeah, yeah, these guys are 13, 14 seconds behind. I reckon Smith be close to a slowdown there. That was. Uh, yeah. I reckon he might have a slowdown there. He seems to have backed off a bit and continuing to back on. Looking ahead of them. Bo Cattell's got these guys coming. Cattell's dropped uh, another half a second on that last. I've got no doubt that Ben Smith had a slow down there. But um, Bo Cattell might be in their sights. We're on lap 19 of 22. Um, we know about Cattell having that quicker pit stop again. He just certainly dropped off of um, the Battle of Ford and Greg Gold in front. He's, he's uh, nine, eight seconds behind these guys now. So. Again, I have to ask, did he put enough fuel in or is he just trying to bring it home in what would be an outstanding third place? Yeah, I think he just might uh, uh, preserve in the car and gain it to the end. Um, I, I think these guys are just going to run out of laps. I don't think Ben Smith, I think he managed to somehow avoid a slowdown there, but he got such a bad run through Rodillion, he just lost all his momentum down the Camel Strait. Um, and that's where he lost all his time from. Uh, so he's probably what, about one and a half seconds back now. So I'd say even though, as long as he doesn't make a mistake, touch wood, Mick Cracknell is um, pretty safe in fourth. Yeah, the, um, the, the battles have certainly uh, waned a little bit. Just, it's just that type of track, isn't it, where um, you get some great starts and some great early laps, but that pit stop just seems to have stretched the field out a little bit. And um, David Moore's done a really good job there in 13th place, uh, running as a privateer from 15th on the grid. Actually led the race for a couple of laps, so the, you know, the way he's going, he should be happy with that pace. He shows some really good pace at a lot of tracks. I do think that he's uh, very strong at Peter Pollen, so hope to see him next week. I think it'll be a pretty busy server next week with an Australian track with the Aussie cars here. See a bit of smoke in front of him from Matthew Thompson, who has done virtually zero driving at all this week, so actually was surprised to see him show up tonight and uh, he's done a great job as well into uh, 12th place from 20th position we have to remember he started last on the grid didn't actually get a qualifying time together so for him to be up in 12th is outstanding i think uh david moore may actually be able to grab 12th place off matty hill they were he was uh, nine tenths quicker last time around um, it looks like he's caught up roughly a second again this time around so um actually uh, Matty made a little mistake through the bus stop there, so he, he will gain, uh, uh, David that is, will gain even more, it's just seven tenths now. Um, well, well, why don't we between... jump on board with Dave Moore for this lap whilst he's right behind, uh, behind Matty Thompson, you can tell us, you know, you're an expert at this track there, Dan, why don't you talk us around this lap? Yeah, <laughs> being a Grand Prix car, oh, a Grand Prix track, I do know it pretty well, as they uh, come through El Rouge now. And uh, over Redillion, very fast part of the track, very easy to get it wrong, particularly in something like a touring car or a GT car, just watching David Moore now go around the outside of uh, Matty Thompson, and Thompson's just let him have it pretty easily as, they, as uh, we come up into Le Com now. Now you want to use all the curb you can, all the curb on the right, all the curb on the left, and then you want to keep the curb as far to the left as possible to get a good run through the right hander and a good uh, run down the short straight into Ravage now. Very Thanks, long, hard, tightening downhill right hand, a very tricky to get right. Again, you don't want to let the car drift out too much because you want to get it to the right for no name corner. Use all the exit curb here so you get a good run down into Puyon. Puyon's a very fast left hander. It tied us at its, in its beginning, so now as it stretches out just gaining speed gaining speed use all the exit curve bring it bring the car back to the left for the fragnes again another chicane you want to use all the curb on the right keep the car right to set it up for the left and then use all the exit curb once again and then quickly bring to the car to the left for stavlo stavlo one not too much curb on the inside it'll upset the car all the exit curb you can get though Again, not too much of the inside curve coming through part two, using a bit of the exit curve. Not too wide though, so you don't get a 1x soft track. Now, coming up to one of the fastest parts of the circuit, coming up to Blanchemont. Now, in the, in these cars, it's down a gear or two, 
not try you don't want to use too much or you don't want to use the exit inside curb at all uh, not too much of the outside curb either as you come up to the bus stop chicane on the slowest parts of the track are very hard braking very hard to get your line right and very hard to get traction and a good run out of down the front straight across the line to complete another lap two two laps to go now for our leaders and David Moore as he comes into the source now uphill brake slightly uphill which helps the braking a bit try not to hit the inside inside wall because that'll land your race use a bit of the exit curb and that's pretty much a lap around spot yeah great lap and in that meantime Michael Healy and Matthew Hill had a great battle and Michael and Matty Hill was able to get the job done on Michael Healy into the entry of the bus stop there good uh, defense there by Mick really close racing there no damage to either and Marty Carroll's also kept up with Bo Cubis here so certainly uh, Bo hasn't been able to drive away from the team either there Vale Richards is seventh uh, Matty Mitchie McLeod sixth Ben Smith certainly dropped off the tail of Mick Crack. Now, who last that was a 22.5, and in front of him, Bo Cattell, a 23.4. So just that one, probably one and a quarter laps to go there. So probably wouldn't think that um, Crack now is going to get to Bo Cattell there. But, um, yeah, certainly so some uh, great late race speed, no doubt at all. And ben Smith, I think he'll be happy with his place considering the dramas he had in the start line last week at Alton Park. And Ethan Griggolt just about to start his last lap as he enters and exits the bus stop. Yeah, the Ian Ford's just dropped uh, a bit behind us at two and a half seconds last time. We will see Ethan Griggolt at 21.9, 40 does a 22.6, so it's actually stretched out by another eight tenths that time around. It's at the 3.3 seconds now. So I think the, the, I think the question we've got to ask Brenton now how long is it before we see Ethan Creek go in the Premier Series? No, there's no compulsion for him to drive that. I've, uh, I've asked uh, both himself and Marty, and uh, and uh, he's choosing to not race at the moment. So uh, whether he races the uh, Enduros at Phillip Island, Sebring, Spa and Bathurst, I don't know what STC's plans are, but I do know that he's not planning on racing the Premier Series, and, and nor should he have to. Um, he's doing a great job here. He's we have to remember this guy's still only new to uh, sim racing and certainly i racing so each week that goes by he's still learning so at the moment he's mastering one track at a time and has to say he's doing an outstanding job at that and uh, when the time is ready and when it suits them i'll uh, no doubt go into the premier series but just for now i think uh, the work that he's doing here in the official series is, is outstanding yeah I don't think, I mean, obviously he's, he's not obliged to, and I don't expect anyone to be obliged to, but it, I think it's more of a temptation thing. More of a temptation. How long can he hold himself back be, before he jumps? You know what? I want to run the Premier Series. Yeah, no, I've, uh, I've asked him privately, and I've asked him, uh, Marty Carroll, and I have my feelings on it. I think you know, maybe it's not the worst idea in the world, but have to respect what the uh, the team wishes are and what Ethan's wishes are that they just don't want to do it yet as I said I can't speak for what they'll do later on uh, if he was a ERA driver and he's got this much talent I would be doing my utmost to uh, to get him into both series but it's not what they want to do and yeah, that's uh, that's how they want to play the game and it's, it's more than fair enough as far as I'm concerned and he's about to uh, he's going through Blancmont for the uh, last time now yeah, so up into the bus stop chicane for the final time for Ethan Creek Gold. As uh, he comes through, he's probably a little conservative on the brakes, which you can understand, just making sure he gets a clean run. A little bit of a celebration coming out of the bus stop. Ethan Creek Gold will win at Spa. Ian Ford will come across the line in second, just 4.6 seconds back. Bo Cattell will come across the line and finish up in third place. Uh, Mick Cracknell will hold on to fourth ahead of Ben Smith and then we've got Mitch McLeod and Vale Riches in sixth and seventh. Just waiting for both the two SSR cars now of Cubis and uh, Carroll as they come through the bus stop chicane now and uh, come across the line. So Cubis ahead of Carroll and Maddie Hill obviously making that move on Healy with a few laps to go will come across the line in 10th, Healy in 11th. David Moore obviously had a few issues earlier on, but he's recovered rather nicely to finish 12th as he comes through 
the bus stop chicane now for the final time. Um, is a very conservative on the exit there actually for David Moore. Uh, and he comes across the line in 12. Uh, Matthew Thompson who's got Mario Blastic all over the back of him and uh, actually Matt Stratford there as well as these guys all come across the line in 13th, 14th and 15th. And then obviously a race for, to forget for John Latham all the way back down way off the back of the field in 16th place and he is our last runner um, we'll go through while well, he's coming to the line we'll go through the DNS we had Greg Sharp who obviously uh, crashed at Redillion uh, towards the end of the race we had Marcella Rivera Corey Preston and James King as DNS as John Latham comes across the line to round out the field yeah I know Latham would probably be disappointed with that result in 16th but it's the same with Matty Hell and Vale Richards. It's lap times. These guys are getting some some uh, good laps under their belt as the endurance series will start to uh, really start in earnest over the next few weeks. So that's where TTL are aiming. You can see what they're doing there. And uh, it's a good job that they've got three cars in the race. It's fantastic. Yeah, obviously the, the drivers just congratulate each other now in, uh, in the driver chat. Um, but still, Ethan Gritko, obviously, uh, just very well controlled off the start. Um, obviously not being at the front, and then in the second stint, as as he's uh, as he did at Zolder, just in both stints, at, he did it in both stints at Zolder. Only in the second stint here at Spa, just pulled away from the field and pulled out a 4.6 second lap, uh, 4.6 second lead, I should say, uh, come the end of the race. Yeah, good race again, and if it was uh, soccer at the moment, the score's going to... Well, sorry, football for you there, Hiko, and for our other Isvises. It's 2-1 at the moment. Ethan's uh, got the job done at race one. Ford, he got the job done in race two. So, um, yeah, race three, uh, again, back to Ethan Grigolt. Yeah, so just a confirmation of the results now. Ethan Grigolt well, has uh, won here at Spa by 4.6 seconds. Over in Ford, Bo Cattell in third, Mike, uh, Michael Cracknell in fourth, Ben Smith in fifth, uh, uh, yeah, fifth, Mitchell McLeod in sixth, Val Riches in seventh, Bo Cubis eighth, Martin Carroll ninth, and Matty, with Matty Hill rounding out the top ten, Michael Healy in eleventh, David Moore in twelfth, Michael Tom, uh, Matthew Thompson, I should say, in thirteenth, Mario, uh, Mario Vlastic in 14th, Matt Stratford in 15th, John Latham in 16th, and then our retirees, Greg Sharp, Marcelo Rivera, Corey Preston, and James Keane. Yeah, so probably a disappointing race for the uh, the two way of life cars tonight, both with DNFs, but um, no doubt you'll see plenty of them in the coming races as well. So, yeah, an outstanding race by Ethan Gold and Bo Cattell, what he does off that start line, I do not know, but there's one thing you can pick, that Bo Cattell will get a good clean start and generally get the job done well. So well done to him on what was a really good third place. Yeah, I mean, he probably would have liked to keep the, tried to keep the lead uh, for a bit longer there, obviously, uh, with that mammoth start, um, but obviously didn't quite have the pace for our top two, um, which is a shame. Um, for Bo, but still a good a good result finishing in third. Yeah, and we've got some drivers uh, coming in for the interview. We'll just have a bit of a break, and we'll come back and have a chat with our drivers.
Welcome back everyone to uh, the iRacing official series, V8 Supercar series that is, uh, the SOF, Monday Night SOF. We're going to start with driver interviews now and we're going to start with our fourth place finisher, Michael Cracknell, who finished in fourth just ahead of Ben Smith. Uh, Crackers, you had a good, there was a good battle at the start between the top five, but it was, sort of turned race long between you and Ben. Thanks, Daniel. Brenton, Hugo. Um, yeah, no, it was. Um, I followed him most of the way through that first stint, and I was lucky that he, he ran wide um, in this um, uh, left-hand sweeper. So um, I was able to capitalise, and from there it was just hold on to that spot and hold him back. And um, I nearly gave it away in the last lap, getting a shortcut through on Rouge. So, um, but I was able to hold it, so it was, it was good. I'm happy with fourth. Yeah, definitely. Um. Just the, going back to the start, obviously the top five uh, pulled away really closely um, early on. What were you thinking, obviously being at the back of that train? Um, what were you thinking as, as they uh, were all scrubbling up ahead? Um, I was actually quite happy because, yeah, I, I had four cars in front of me and I looked at looked at the gap back and it was like four seconds so I didn't really have any pressure on me which was really good and it just helped me concentrate on the back of Ben's car so yeah th that part of it was um, probably beneficial for me if anything. Well uh, just see if Brenton has any questions that I'm pretty sure yes, I've covered so everything. Sorry crackers mate um, they're going to keep asking and I know I've spoken to Marty personally as well and also with Ethan I'll, I'll put it to him as well. Uh, it's a shame that Brenton just cut it out, but I'm pretty sure his question's going to be, uh, when are you guys going to do the Premier Series? <laughs> well, I'm actually doing the Premier Series, so um, that's probably a question more directed at a couple of other members of STC, but I'm actually doing it, so um, yeah, I'm enjoying it too. Yeah, hopefully I'm back now. Yeah, well, um, Cracker's a great job by you tonight, mate. I know you run the Premier Series, mate. How, how hard is it do you find to run both the Premier Series and the Official Series, mate? You seem to go pretty strong in both. Um, yeah, it's, it is difficult sort of switching from one track to the other and just trying to fit it all in, but um, you adapt to it. Once you do five laps on, on a particular track, you die yourself into that, and after that, you, the more time you spend on it, the better it is so it's not that hard you, I mean you're in the same car so it's it's not too bad well mate great job tonight Philip Island next week what's your thoughts on that yeah it's a hometown track for me and it's one of my favorite tracks too so um yeah really looking forward to it um I'd like to thank SDC and Marty again for doing a great job and all the all the team at SDC and um also Race Spot and Demodov Innovations for putting on a great show Cheers. Yeah. Cheers for that, yes. uh, Cracker. So, good job tonight, mate. Fourth place in round three of the official V8 Supercar Series. So, well done to him. With us, we've got third place man, Bo Cattell. Bo, mate, uh, what, watch the replay of that race. I picked you at the start. I know you started on the second row. I, uh, I called it before the light went out. I said, watch this. Bo Cattell will be in front by O'Rouge. You didn't let me down. Well done on third place. I um, didn't expect to get a good start. I was saying to a couple of mates with me here, and I was saying to them, "There isn't like I'm not going to be able to get this thing off the line." But then just hooked up, and away she went. It's good. Not sure what's happening to your TS there, mate, but it does sound uh, unusual, um, mate. Yeah, third place. So have you had much chance to practice this week? I thought I saw you in a practice server early, and you were showing good pace there, but I'm not sure you've done any races during the week. Uh, yeah, I haven't had much time to practice, basically. Um, can you hear me right now? A bit better, mate, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I've really only had today um, as practice, and I had a little bit of practice yesterday and then had some issues and um, couldn't actually get into the race. So um, I, was I wasn't expecting a result like this, so I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, but... Um <clears throat> obviously a, a good result um obvious oh, obviously a, a bit of pressure a, a lot of pressure from Ian and Ethan all early on but 
I mean, obviously with the lack of practice, it was still a good result, but would you have liked to uh, stay at the front a bit longer than you did? Yeah, definitely, and I think that comes down to setup. I didn't have a lot of time to make the setup, so I made it a hundred percent turn, um, zero rear end grip, and I think that showed. I just burnt the rears up really quick, and and then in the stop, I took um, a little less fuel than I probably should have, and um, uh, you know to try and go out with Ethan, but um, yeah, I was fuel saving massively at the end. Well, mate, a good job tonight, third place. Philip Island next week. Um, only the uh, one car there tonight. You know, didn't see uh, Wayne Burke at all. So hopefully uh, the, the team will come back stronger and uh, <laughs> stronger, obviously, next week. So what's your thoughts on Philip Island? Oh, I'm not a huge fan of that track, so we'll have to uh, see how I go. But I'll, I'll hopefully get enough time to put in some uh, practice and get the car underneath me and uh, see if I can salvage something worth a few points hopefully well no doubt I'm thinking there might have been some chunky points tonight for third so congratulations to you tonight mate third place for Bo Cattell tonight in the Demonov Innovations official iRacing V8 Supercar Championship I, I think he'd be happy with that result after an outstanding start and uh, yeah, got a really punchy with um, Ian Ford and Ethan Grigor especially after the uh, the pit uh, en exit on uh, lap 13, I think it was. With us in the commentary booth, Ian Ford, Evolution Racing Australia, Demon of Innovations car, 40, second place tonight after a pole position. Tell us about your race. Oh, it was a, it was a rather average start. I got the same sort of start that um, Ethan did, and I just moved across trying to make sure that Ethan didn't get up the inside of me into um, Eau Rouge, but Bo got a fantastic start and muscled his way through and just had to play single file and make sure that Ethan realised what was going on and just had to hunt down Bo and you know he put up a few few um, successful blocks and then you know we cleared him and just the pit stops just didn't go our way this this time last night in the um, late race last night it, it went a couple of seconds in the other direction so you know you win some you lose some in the pits and um, I just came out absolutely all guns blazing trying to make sure that I could actually get up to Bo or, and um, Ethan and Bo threw some ridiculous blocks in there, um, to, like just after his pit stop. But um, turns out that he actually short fueled it, so like maybe it wasn't quite necessary, and just lost the draft to Ethan. And he just had a few couple of tenths up his sleeve in the clear air. Uh, it would have been a fantastic battle to the finish if I was still in the draft. But you know, fantastic show for the first half of the race. Hopefully, everyone else put on a show for the second half. Yeah, it was a good drive by yourself and uh, and Bo, and uh, mate, it was a good show. There's no doubt about that. And yeah, you know, second place is certainly you, you do sound a bit uh, agitated, mate. I must admit, but second place is certainly nothing to be sneezed at, mate. So I think it's a good result. No, second second highest amount of points for the week. So that's an absolutely fantastic result. Um, you know, I just kicking myself a little bit. I was more expecting to win the race, or at least be a bit closer than four and a half seconds, but. You know, I, I predicted winning last week, I'll predict winning next week and, you know, try and make up for it. That's all I can really do. Um, just give my absolute bloody all in the Demidov hold. Yeah, well, next week, Philip Island, I know you like that track, but give us your thoughts about it. Uh, it's going to be a bit difficult this season getting it set up decent with the um, all the different weather and stuff because, like, Phillip Island, obviously in the middle of Bass Strait almost, you know, down p uh, past Port Melbourne, it's going to be absolutely windy it's going to be cold it's going to be like you know in inferno if they put in like summer style heat it's it's going to be a hard track to actually keep up with the car like you could be halfway through a race and the weather will just change massively so you're just going to have to make sure that you pit at the right time get the right tire pressures on and just hang on for dear life if it goes it goes the wrong way and you know it's going to be a good track going to be fun racing so hopefully do well we do well well, like they say about Victoria, mate, if you don't like the weather, just hang around for another 10 minutes. So no doubt, mate, um, the car will be uh, onwards and upwards next week and uh, two race wins for Ethan Grigal, one race win for yourself, mate. So, yeah, hopefully uh, next week, mate, the uh, times will be reversed and we'll have it uh, back to 2 all for you. That That's definitely the plan, especially with the points being so close. The only, the only thing in the standings at the moment is I've got one drop round already there since I had all the disconnects in the first week, so... 
We're not too far off Ethan, we just got to keep on making sure that he doesn't get all these mega points on Monday nights. Yeah, well great job, so Ian Ford second place tonight in the uh, official series, mate. So well done to him. And finally, uh, I'll let you go, Daniel, on this. Ethan Griggolt, congratulations, winner at round three at the spa Frankershort circuit, mate. Tell us about your ace and Dan will fill in the gaps for you. Oh, uh, oh I had an absolutely awesome race. Um, at, at the start, was a lot of good fun with um, but Bo and Ian. We were just switching back places all the time, going side by sides through some of the corners. Uh, it, it got hairy in some places, but yeah, it, it was one of the best races I've had in a while too. Well, one of the highest pressure situations I've been in for, for the last few laps. Um, trying to keep an equal gap to Ian as well. I tell you what, Ethan, that like every week you seem to be impressing me because obviously you're still fairly new to eye racing, but the the head that you got on your shoulders is insane because I the the uh, move I'll remember is when uh, I think it was actually just straight out of the pit stops when uh, Bo tried to throw it down the inside through the second right hand of Lacombe, not the first one, and you just saw him there coming and just gave him enough room that you didn't make contact and I mean I've seen people screw that up in multi-class and when there's been a car that's been way faster never mind in the same class so you seem to be impressing me every week so keep doing what you're doing whatever you're doing <laughs> yeah thanks um when cars usually come up beside me like that I try and straighten up the car and just punch the gas and get a good exit and works sometimes sometimes it doesn't as well and it just worked for me that time uh, obviously they Obviously, though, uh, you didn't really have the upper hand in, really, in the first half of the race. I mean, you did start second, and Bo got that rocket ship start, so you dropped the third early on, and it was more watching the back of Ian, and obvi obviously you had Crackers and Benny Smith not too far behind either, so very, very tightly uh, packed uh, group, and you were right in the middle of it. Yeah, be being in the middle of a pack like that... Um it's a lot of pressure because you really want to try and move forward and and take that first spot, but you've also got to try and defend from behind if if an attack comes from them. So yeah, um, it was just a good fun race. What what, what can I say? I, I'm actually really happy to come away with a win this week. I've actually not been enjoying this track at all, and I think it was halfway through the race I actually finally figured out how to smoothly drive the track, and 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 that's when I could stay consistent enough to stay ahead of Ian. Obviously, uh, the team boss is going to be pretty happy with with the result as well. Ah, uh, yeah, my, my, Marty's always happy w w when I'm up here doing my best. So, and he he's the entire, entire reason why I'm in STC in the first place. He he picks me up at the I think midway of season one, which is um yeah I, I was a nobody back then, and I like to think I'm I'm somebody now. Well, Ethan, you're certainly a somebody, mate, and you've done so well since being in iRacing, mate, and it's a great pick by Marty Carroll, mate, and no doubt there's uh, others you want to thank tonight, mate, so we'll leave the floor with you, and uh, yeah, good job. Yeah, I'll just thank uh, ERA and Demidor for sponsoring this broadcast, it's an awesome thing, and we really needed Monday nights back. Well, great job, mate. And uh, Philip, Philip Isle next week, you know, I'm not going to say you're going to be quick there because we know you're quick as soon as you get in the car and no matter where you drive. So, mate, good luck for next week, mate. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you can bring to the table. I think you and Ian have got very close race pace tonight and, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing on for the rest of the season. Yep, thank you. Ethan Grigolt, winner race uh, three here at Spa. Frank Shorps, fantastic effort. After winning round one, now round three. He's just shown some good pace throughout. And even last week, you know, he didn't get the job done for the win, but still good enough to come second. And, and that's what it's all about. You don't have to win every week. But um, I'll tell you what, if he doesn't win, that means that someone's outdriven him. And tonight, he, he really did put in a strong performance. Not forgetting he was third at the end of uh, lap one behind uh, Bocatel and Ian Ford. So drove a really strong race there for the rest. And we welcome Marty Carroll finally to our broadcast tonight, the uh, race manager of uh, STC Motorsports, Marty. Great battle with Bo uh, Cubas tonight. Yeah, always got to put the team rookies through their pace, you know. But uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it was definitely an exciting race there. Uh, 
Uh, we we're, were caught in that mid uh, mid battle pack there with uh, Michael Healy and uh, Matty Hill and uh, Corey early on. Um, you know, tremendous battle. You know, and we only use Martin Brundle's team orders for opening lap. There's two rules. First rule, you don't take out your teammate. Second rule, refer to rule one. Refer to rule one. <laughs> exactly <laughs> That's right. That's it. So, other than that, uh, I did, I did, uh, I did offer him uh, if he had a run, I'd let him go, and he's like, "Nah, let's race." You know, so you know, we did. Uh, you know, if you can't race your teammate hard, then who can you race? Well, I saw you on uh, the back-to-back -back laps through Rouge. Was there any talk on TS as to yours, mine, ours? Sorry, or where was that going? Uh, are we doing this? Uh, we'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you're racing against the, you know high level guys like Bo and and Mogul Healy around, you know, like it just like I said last week, just the quality of of the main event again. Um, the standards just up there, and it doesn't matter whether it's first and second or nineteenth and twentieth racing. The the quality's there in the race and the and the skill level of all the guys. So. You know, you can leave them just that car width and you know they're going to keep it in there. You know, the, there's, the mistakes are few and far between, and which is the type of level we expect up here, you know. Yeah, and fantastic race by yourself and Bo. And, and Bo just adds that little bit of uh, expertise in regards to um, the setups and all that as well. So no doubt a good, uh, good arrival for your team. Yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to see what he can bring to the team. And... Uh, like, yeah, definitely got a good technical brain on him. And, um, you know, with Michael Fulci being away and Nigel being away running their go-karts, uh, respectively, uh, across the world. Uh, you know, with me just doing all, um, all the engineering work on, on the majority of the, the road cars across the board, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, it's going to be handy for me to have a bit of a hand there. So, And I'm still in the middle of moving house. So. Well, uh, Marty, a good run for you tonight, um, good run for the team as well, so uh, thank you for coming up and talking with us um, after the race, um, so thank you for that. Oh, no problems, thank you, thank you Brendan, Daniel, good call once again, uh, thank you Hugo and Racebot TV and Demidov for, for putting on the series, that's fantastic and look forward to Philip Island next week. Yeah, and look forward to calling it too. So, Marty Carroll, good job there, the uh, race manager of SDC. I don't think anybody out there really appreciates the amount of work that Marty did to get this, uh, not so much the series, it's the official series, but to get the broadcast happening, to get that montage, that wonderful two-minute montage at the start, to get that happening as well. So, you know, on behalf of the iRacing community and the V8 community here in Australia, I think uh, a lot of thanks needs to go towards Marty. But, um, yeah, round three done and dusted. A great race again. Uh, Phillip Island is going to be epic next week. The guys love it there, and the V8s are so well suited to that Phillip Island circuit. So really looking forward to next week. Yeah, definitely. So that's pretty much going to uh, wrap us up here here from uh, Spa. Uh, so we're three weeks down now, Brenton, a quarter of the way into the season already. And as you said, we're looking forward to Phillip Island next week. Um, a big, big weekend this weekend here on Racebot TV. Obviously, we got our various races, but of course, the six hours of Watkins Glen, the next round in the uh, Racing Endurance Championship. So you'll be able to catch it all here on Racebot TV this weekend, Saturday, uh, 1300 GMT. I had to think what time it was, but 1300 GMT here on Racebot TV. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.